Yo, what's going on, everybody? Um, welcome. Yeah, welcome. If you could, please go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, do all that stuff. Holla at, holl at us. Don't holler at us, but just, just like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Follow we don't actually want right? to hear from right? you. You know what I mean? Just do, just do what y'all do as YouTubers. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, uh, we are here in front of the Jane Byrne Exchange, the circle here in Chicago. It's actually back there. You can see it. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Yeah, it's right back there. But uh, this this has been redone because this right. was a horrible place to be uh, on the expressway after trying to get home from work. Correct. Um, but we're not trash. Yeah, yeah, it was trash. We're not here to talk about that. We talk about the lady herself, Jane Byrne. Uh, so that's what today's episode is about. Ooh, the sun just yeah, came for real. out. And yeah, this sun just said whitewash. <laughs> 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 uh, anyway, so Jane Margaret Burke. Really? Jane Margaret Burke. Yes. Burke with a K. With a K E. Oh, well, oh. Yeah, yeah. With the K E. Who changed it? Uh, William Byrne. Oh. In 1956. Okay. They married, and uh, that's oh. how she became Jane Byrne. Uh, she also became Chicago's first mayor in April 16th, 1979. What do you mean, first mayor? I mean, first woman mayor. Oh, I was <laughs> so, like... Yeah, she became Chicago's first woman mayor. Y'all know what the hell I'm talking about. Stop playing. <laughs> maybe they don't. Maybe they're yeah, not from right. Chicago. Yeah, maybe, like, maybe they're Chicago was yeah. mayorless. Yeah, you're right. maybe they was like, damn, it was 70s. 1979 was their first mayor when Chicago was born. <laughs> that's not, that's yeah. <laughs> Anyway, but we got to find out what happened in between all that time from her getting married to her becoming mayor and what yeah. happened afterwards. That's yeah. what today's episode is about. So let's get into it. Let's go. So 1956, she had her first uh, daughter, okay. Catherine. I think that was maybe her only daughter. Mm -hmm. I think. I can't remember. I don't know. Uh, but she made, she she had Catherine right okay. um, with William. Her and William had a had a family going on. Look at this light. Look at this light. Okay, okay. there it is. That that'll work. Uh, <laughs> uh, 1959, mm -hmm. William tragically died oh. in a plane accident. Oh no. Yes, he tried to land in fog oh. and oh, he was a pilot. He was a pilot. He tried to land in fog and it went south. So. Uh, fortunately, now she is a widow and a single mom to an infant. Wow. <laughs> so, so it's just it's just all bad for. Her. So she kind of went into thought process. What does she do? You know what I mean? Like she got to be, she got to survive for her fa uh, kid now. You know what I mean? Uh, so she ended up taking a job. She actually replaced her sister, mm. uh, working for the JFK presidential um, campaign oh, in wow. the Chicago branch. Wow. Yeah. So, so that's what she did. Um, and then this is when stuff start to get real crazy. Mm -hmm. In case in case y'all are wondering, we are here on the UIC campus, yes. um, kind of taking a stroll. It's right by the uh, Circle Exchange, so right by the Jane Byrne. Kind of keep it local here, close to Greek Town, one of our favorite spots to be. So that's where and we we've are. We've already been to her park in one of the episodes, the Chicago birthday episode. We did. We were recording in the Jane Byrne Park, so we didn't yeah. want to repeat the Yeah, background. right. Look at that. Look at that. Click the link up there. Go check that out. Um, but to continue the story, so what happened? She ran into, I don't know if y'all know what it, the uh, Chicago machine is. Mm. Now, let's, it, some old school <laughs> Chicagoans, some old school Chicagoans, y'all born in the, in the 70s, 70s, 50s, yeah. 60s, 70s. Right, right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So for those that don't know, the Chicago machine was basically the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. led by uh, Mayor uh, Richard J. Daley, who served from uh, 1955 as Chicago's mayor to 1967 until he died of a heart attack. But the Chicago machine was basically, <laughs> he ran an iron fist. He knew how to win. He knew how to force people to vote um, for him. Mm -hmm. and he basically assured himself he's not leaving, right? Right. So... That's where Jane Byrne ran into, right? She ran into him because caught the attention of him, mm. of uh, Richard Daly. She was like, wow, you working for JFK. Wow. You know what I mean? You must be something. Right. Uh, so. He, and a woman in the 70s? And a woman in the a 70s. A widow. Yes. So he actually brought her on and hired her for a couple different positions. Mm -hmm. And eventually she worked her way up to a high enough position within his cabinet, which became 
he she became the first woman in his cabinet. Wow. Yeah. So pretty pretty dope That's for her. So wild. Yeah. So she so she's running. She's running things. She's mm-hmm. like starting to make a name for herself. She she's moving and things are kind of looking up. I want to preface this by saying she didn't want to run for mayor. She did not. <laughs> I mean, not for uh, she didn't want to be a politician. That uh-huh. wasn't like a goal of hers to be a politician. But here she is being a politician. Right. Now. Chicago Machine did a lot of corrupt stuff, right? They did a lot of corrupt stuff. When he died, Richard J. Daley died in 67 of that heart attack in office, they had to pick a successor to, you know, obviously fill his void. Well, this is where it's interesting because when they tried to pick a successor, the next person in line, according to the rules of Chicago politics and that, was a black guy by the name of uh, Wilson Frost. Okay. And the Chicago Machine and all the aides that work for Daily were like, nah, that's not about to happen. <laughs> We're not about to have a black mayor, yeah. not in this Democratic Party. That's so they crazy. so they bypassed that and they they chose um, the now mayor uh, Belandic, Michael Belandic. Mm. <laughs> that's how Michael Belandic became mayor of Chicago. Interesting. Very interesting. So it's 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 like. Uh Within the party, there was a succession. Thing. Yeah, it like, wasn't like, like like presidential. If the president dies, the next person in line is the vice, the vice president. president. After vice president, I think it's secretary of state and so on oh, and so forth. Oh, oh, it's I that see, kind of thing. So like when he died, there was there was a <laughs> there was a hierarchy that should have been followed, gotcha. but they bypassed him. Check it out. Go for those again. Though if you know the Chicago Dem, uh, Democratic machine, you know what I'm talking about. But for those that don't know, that's why Chicago say. People say Chicago's corrupt. Then, yeah, right. It's well, yeah. That's exactly why we're a windy city. Um, however, we keep on going here because when Michael Belandic became president, uh, the mayor. mayor of Chicago, uh, Jane Byrne was in the cabinet, right? But Jane Byrne started to blow the whistle mm. on things that were happening inside the cabinet. Interesting. So she started to blow the whistle on on certain things, and so people were like, uh, "No!" So he fired her. He fired her from that position, right? And so now she has already crossed the Chicago Democratic right. Party, the, the machine, they call it. And now she's single mom, still, I don't know, not really into politics. So here's what she did. She said, I'm going to run for mayor. I'm going to run for mayor. <laughs> so she, so no, you're not about to do me. You're right. So she so she did. In the meantime, she got remarried, mm-hmm. right? She got remarried. I forgot the guy's name, but she got remarried. And she started to run uh, her campaign. Now, nobody thought she was going to win. I was reading. I don't think people thought. I don't think she thought she was going to win. Right. But she ran this race. And and so, as she's running, her appeal was she was a regular woman, right? Uh, a person of the people. She could speak to politics and she could speak to the regular people. So yeah. that was that was the, the nice draw for her. Right. She was uh, talking to the minorities, particularly Latino community, mm-hmm. the black community get to that in a second not that she was one but you know right she, was, right. she cared she, about them yeah right? maybe, but here's what they maybe. did though they, they tried to dumb down her womanness so to say because at this time it's the 70s right it's the 70s there's no women running politics like this yeah. especially in a big city not a lot going on so they had from the hair to the way she dressed and talked they tried to lessen her up as a woman not me y'all talking this is the 70s in Chicago. So it was rough for Some minorities and for women. Yeah, 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 it's still it's still crazy. But that, that's how it was. They basically wanted her to be feminine, but, but not, not a feminist. Feminine. Yes, not a feminist, not too Definitely womanly. Not feminist, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so they made her wear wigs, a mm-hmm. certain wig. To, it was crazy. Anyway, we keep on going. Here's what happened. As she's running this race, uh, she's appealing to these people. She eventually made it to the primaries because the Democratic Party... Obviously, uh, the, the machine is starting to fall under the pressure of, oh, wow, we got this woman who's relating to minorities, mm-hmm. which they've never done. And here she goes. The primaries happen. Uh, I believe Does that she won the primary. She won the primary. Obviously, she, she, avoided the, she avoided the runoff, y'all. 51% wow. to 49%. Wow. She beat Michael Belandic, so he's out there, right? Wow, and he was incumbent. He was incumbent. But this is how he lost. This is how he lost. So check it out. Summer of 70, uh, the winter of 79, January 13th, I believe it was, Chicago had that huge snowstorm that everybody knows. 21 inches of snow fell on the city. This is where Michael Belandic really lost the people. So what he did was the trains and buses were all locked up. People couldn't get, couldn't get to work and everything, and it was packed. So what he did was he ordered all the buses and trains and everything to run express. And when he did that, when they ran express, they missed yeah. 
um, pretty much all the black communities, right. so they were missing stops and things like that. Because we know transportation, if you listen to yes. any of our transportation episodes, particularly number know. 77, mm-hmm. <laughs> North you Lawndale. already know that. Yeah, you know, you know that it was, was that's, an issue. That was an issue. So, so that's what he did, and so now. You know, Jane Byrne just jumped all over that, right? Yeah. She jumped all over the opportunity to be like, hey, look, she was getting on trains. I was reading, she was getting on trains and buses and wow. just screaming out, Mayor Belandic did this to you. He did this. And so, of course, people are like, hell yeah, we just, we're not going to vote for this dude. And so that's how she won the primary. Eventually, she won, um, she won the, uh, the, the mayor, you know, mayoral race against the Republican there. Um, and she became mayor. Now, when she became mayor, this is where, this is where, you know, it's a little, it, it's, it's little dicey for her because things didn't really work out how she wanted to be. Keep in mind, she didn't really want to be a mayor. Nobody thought she was right. going to win. She was a huge underdog, but she won. Now she here. She has to be mayor. She has to follow through with these promises, and she she didn't really do that. Like most right. like most people do, she didn't do it. Now, some people say that, well, we'll argue the fact that it's because she didn't want to be it in the first place, not mm-hmm. because she herself was racist or right. any just prejudice or anything. It just she didn't want to be here yeah whatever the case was you know it happened she didn't follow through on like a lot of the promises to the latino and the black yeah. community and she made some iffy calls surprise surprise yeah right yeah right she made some iffy calls too so mm-hmm. one of the iffy calls is she hired uh the first black um woman to be a uh, school superintendent right okay. ruby love which was cool but then at the same token, she also replaced a lot of the Chicago Housing Authority officials mm. that were black with white people. And so now keep in mind, if you follow the podcast, kind of like what Sarah was saying, not only was transportation the issue, but this is you got white flight happening, people moving to the suburbs, they yeah. the redlining all in the black and brown communities is right. happening right around this time. You even got um, the assassination of Martin Luther King and the riots happening. So she's going through kind of a lot here. And that's a, and that was a nifty move. The next thing she did was that she moved into the Robert, uh, the uh, Cabrini Green projects, right, as a to bring awareness to, um, you know, violence and guns and things yeah. like that. She did that for three weeks. Her and her husband and, and Catherine they moved in. However, when she got there, she started having people arrested, gang members mm-hmm. arrested, and they, of course, they're black. You know what I mean? Um, so she's having them arrested, and that was where it was like, mm, this is bad. Yeah. This is bad. So she started losing the people that way, right? Uh, long story short, this kind of stuff happens. Uh, she did have some victories, though. Mm. I do want to talk about some victories. She started the uh, Taste of Chicago, right. the Jazz Fest. She also started, yep. um, which was really cool. She started those type of things. She also was a huge advocate and the first mayor to recognize the Chicago Gay Pride Parade. So she did do some things, and that's where you kind of... She, she put black people in prison, but also... You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what she I mean? brought the taste to Chicago. You know, you know so what I mean? But we, we're, right. we're not here to judge that, you know what I mean? But it, it, these are just the facts here. Um, to judge. But <laughs> I just I'm, said this I'm is, judging. This, this is our podcast. <laughs> like we do what we want to do. Um, but that was kind of like how her legacy went. Now, here's some here's some other fun facts. I, I, I will say this. She she eventually lost it. She lost historically, right? right. Um, only other mayor to lose the way she did was Mayor Lightfoot. You know, so uh, she she lasted one term, but uh, there you go, a um, couple of terms or whatever it was at the time. Who? Um, oh. Jane Byrne. So she she got ousted pretty quickly, and of course after her was the first black president, uh, black mayor. mayor of Chicago, Harold Washington. Right. So fun fact, fun fact though, mm-hmm. did you know in 1980 she advocated for Indy race, Indy car racing to come <laughs> to Chicago. <laughs> Uh, yes, it was a failed attempt, That's but she advocated for it hilarious. to come to Grant Park July 4th. Wow. And it didn't happen. Yeah. Well, it happened, it happened 40 just, years later. Just a lot, lot later. But it wasn't in deep. But, yeah. but check this out. She also was trying to get Chicago in 1992 to have its third World's Fair. Wow. I had no clue about that. I did not know that. I did not know that there was a third World Fair. Uh, uh, well, there's Fair. multiple. Yeah, yeah, third in Chicago. Third in Chicago. Chicago yeah, yeah. would have. I didn't even know we were. At, I don't know how I missed that, but I didn't know that. But yeah, we, we would have had a third World's Fair. Yeah. But the what, reason why they I did, feel like. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. You no, know, the reason why that didn't happen is the politics was yeah. trash. I was gonna say a World's Fair would now be like at McCormick. 
It would just be would it be? Yeah, probably, you know what? It'd probably be all over the city. <laughs> it would be. It would be. It'd be. But it wouldn't be in the scale of like they're building monuments. No, they wouldn't. They would like just that. use. Like, they're not going to build museums yeah. and stuff. Because there ain't shit way. going on in that McCormick place. I mean, it is. It's stuff going on. But like, even with it's, all these things going on, it's right. just huge. I refuse to believe that it is constantly. Be, we have to do an, a McCormick place episode because I refused. We did. We yeah, did do right. one. We C2E2. Did. C2E2. But, but, we, but one on the building. I get on it. On the building. It, just, it can't all be in right. use. Right. It can't be. Speaking of in use, we got a table reserved. Yes, we gotta uh, go eat. That we gotta go eat. So I'm so excited about this place. Yeah. So let's get it. There you go, Jane Byrne. Some nice history. Let's go eat. All right, so we ate at Tofano's. Yeah, buddy. Uh, which has been here in this exact location for 93 years. 93 of them things, one of the top 10 oldest restaurants in Chicago. Top, the top, 10. One of the top 10 oldest in Chicago. Yeah, correct. <laughs> yes. So the restaurant was started by the current owner, who's Joey. Uh, it was his grandmother that started the restaurant. And then um, he took over in the 80s. His grandmother's name is Teresa. Teresa. Teresa Fatupano du, du, du Bono. <laughs> Sorry, doesn't speak Man, I tried. I tried. Um, but yeah, so his, his grandma, his aunt, and his mom uh, continued to cook with him. I believe his mom or his grandma cooked here until she was like 90 or something. Yeah. They literally lived next door to the restaurant. So yeah. the whole family yeah. has been here. <laughs> to the point that the back of the restaurant we used to be the a garage. Yeah. The, <laughs> the garage to his auntie. Yeah. Who it's lives, like, who still lives next, next door. door. And now they converted that into yeah. a uh, party room. Par yeah, a private, like a private Ooh, event room. <laughs> <laughs> Take a shot. <laughs> um, they, also have, they also have like... Uh, what do they call it? The table? The, the gangster table. Gangster so table. So table number one is where his grandma or aunt, his aunt I think it was, used to sit. Somebody that he knew, that's a relative, used to claim that they were a grandparent? Uh, God, godparent. Godparent. We fucking this up. But but, but it's were, a gangster table the, there. They were the godchild of yeah, Al Capone. And that used to be the gangster table. Uh, and it was by the door because you know yeah. how they do. You know, gotta gotta, gotta dip gotta out exit. quick. You know what I'm saying? You know. Uh, but it's still there. You can come and sit at yeah. it. Like, yeah. Like <laughs> for real. Right. Um, the place is literally you can cash, check, <laughs> check. or Venmo. Ain't nobody writing no check. Ain't but they have an ATM inside, so you yeah, can pay. So you, you can so pay by cash. You go ahead and get that three dollar fifty cent. Honestly, the fee. service is top notch. Top we were, notch. Like, we were checked on multiple times. The food was amazing. Yep. Um, yeah. It was. It was. I mean, the vibe is cool. We here on a Sunday and it's a big family day. Big family day. You know how the Italians get down. They bring the whole squad out, and so everybody and their entire squad is here. Everybody here. You know Super what I mean? Super child friendly. Yep. There's the Trevi fountain right behind us <laughs> where the children were playing. <laughs> the, tre the Trevi. Every time she say that, this shit funny to me. <laughs> I don't want them to hear me say that. It's not, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's not it. Um, but yeah, we had a great, we had yeah. a wonderful meal. But the food. Let's get it. Let's yeah. talk about the food. So we got we started out with the stuffed artichoke, which Dario ate half of while constantly Wait a minute. talking shit about it. Wait a minute. It. No, I didn't eat half. I you, had some. You, now, you, you, you smacked. I, I you did. Smacked, I, you smacked. <laughs> yeah. Artichoke, artichoke ain't bad. to talk shit. Artichoke ain't bad. I just feel like it's unnecessary. Like, what is the point of artichoke? What is the point of anything? You could argue what's the point of anything in life. At least artichoke don't have no taste. Artichoke don't taste like what? nothing. All right, let's end this. No, no, no. This we no, no. Let's right have here. this conversation. So check it out. <laughs> I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna keep it 100 with y'all. I don't see no point in artichoke. You're literally the most disrespectful person I've ever met in my life. But I still don't see no point in artichoke. <laughs> I still now here's the thing. It's not nasty. It's not bad or nothing like that. It's just so little to it. I know a lot of people think it's a waste of energy. It is. Say that again. What do you think? Not me. Do I don't you think, think it's that. a waste of energy? Nope, I don't. I love artichoke. But a lot of people think. Some people that think it's a waste of energy to eat stuffed <laughs> artichoke. It's the same shit with your chest next time. No. You know what I'm saying? I like, don't think so. like this, 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 she talking about me. She talking uh -huh. about me. I'm some people. What I will tell you is that this right here, 
that right there, the stuffing part, the stuffing going crazy. If they had cranberry sauce, <laughs> stop it. That is literally the dumbest thing you've ever said. No, it's not. Yes, it's Artists, true. That is, that's not the dumbest thing I've ever said. <laughs> oh, why? why did I do that? Why did, why did I fall into that? I don't anyway, know. Uh, anyway, that's wild that you say artichoke is unnecessary. It is unnecessary. But whatever. Nope, it's not. So, but it was good though. It, was it had amazing. this. The stuffing was really the good. The stuffing was fire yeah. though. The bread it was crumbs fire. were so good. And I would it say sat in like a pool of butter and yeah. lemon. It was so good. I would say if if there was cranberry sauce to be had, but it would I would have been playing space by the end of the night. Well, I would have. I'm telling you, that's how comfortable I would have been. So <laughs> like it would have been like, it, but it was it was good the way it was. It was. Really it's, it's what I say. Um, Still unnecessary. I don't I don't know well, what artichoke right. is about. Well, we also had sausage and sweet peppers. Yeah, yeah. We got now sausage, sage. It's like a mild spicy sage sausage, <laughs> and it was it was good. So good. It was very good. So yeah. the sausage you get not only when you order you the get, sausage you it's get like three full three very large sausages. You know what I'm saying. And you be the judge of what very large is. <laughs> they are above average. It's a, <laughs> it's three above average sausages. <laughs> well above average. Just, why, slow down. Damn. You do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Mm -hmm. Get that sausage. <laughs> and that sweet pepper. You know, we're going to get all of it. Let's do boom, boom, boom. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> you should add transcendental music right here. <laughs> Draw <Transcendo>. your transcending. <laughs> transcendental music. These are some big sausages, Paul. That's what she said. <laughs> Bless you. That's what she said. And, uh, <laughs> you are, huh? <laughs> How's that sausage? <laughs> One of the best sausages I've ever had. Wow. Anyway, it was good. It was yeah. good. You get a nice, good portion. Um, and the peppers are... You know, peppers yeah, that you really get with it? Very good. peppers. Yeah. Green and red peppers. We had um, that as an appetizer because we're different. <laughs> no, we ate it with the rest of the stuff. It all came together. True. We then had the uh, the chicken, the lemon chicken, the Tufano lemon chicken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get that? Yes. Get that because I don't know how the hell they make that. But I don't know is. how they do it either. Yeah. They make the crust is super. The skin is so, like, so crispy. So crispy. Yes. It's so good. Fantastic. And the potatoes are amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the sauce on it, it's like a garlic lemon yeah. sauce, which was so which, good. And it's like swimming in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is. Like, so if you if you want to dip a little bit more, you could do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's perfect for the potatoes because the potatoes are crispy. So, like, dipping them into the sauce was Here's so the messed good. up part. I ain't even have no damn uh, uh, potatoes? potatoes. I was just, you know. <laughs> just finger Fucking. licking the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Look at this. Hold on, this is what they be doing on Instagram. <laughs> Look at that. Hold Look on, let me zoom in. Zoom you see in. that? You see that? Oh no. Watch this That's though. That's not how they do it, but uh, <laughs> go off. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Transcendental music again. Transcendental music. They going crazy with this. It's fresh, it's juicy. Look at that. Mm. Hold on, let's zoom in again. Mm. Damn, mm. I'm not zooming in. Okay. Well. <laughs> Damn. I dropped some. You zoom in too. You zoom in too. <laughs> <laughs> you were, you were dissecting that thigh. Hey, who me? Hey, y'all. <laughs> you know? No, they don't know. You know? They don't know. <laughs> no. They don't need to know. Let's move okay, on. Okay, move on. <laughs> to the third dish, which was a low pasta dish with a tomato basil sauce no. and a huge meatball. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> or maybe average meatball. I don't uh, know. What no, right. no, it was bigger than normal. I'll tell you that much. Unless you got problems down there. This, this episode yeah, what is going on? They, Joey watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Tufano was watching um, this. But, I mean, that was also it's very, fantastic. very good. I, I would say, like, a, I thought tomato basil would be, like, too simple of a sauce. Yeah. But it honestly has a lot of flavor. But here's the catch, though. Because I feel like it, it could have been too simple. But because here at Tufano, you can add a meatball mm -hmm. to any sauce that you yeah. want. And you can pick the sauce. So, like, right. if you order your pasta, you can pick what pasta you want, you can pick what sauce you want, right. and then you can pick what you add on it. Yeah. And so the, the bowl of pasta with just the sauce is, like, $5, and the meatball is, like, four, four bucks. $4. So, and it's, and like she said, it's hefty. large. Yeah. It's, like, a large. Hefty ball. Yeah. <laughs> I meant the pasta bowl. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Mm. 
Oh, that's the meatball. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the... <laughs> okay. Mm. All right, so this is, we got, um, we got ragu. No, we got tomato we got basil. Ragu. Tomato basil. <laughs> <laughs> tomato said, tomato said basil. Ragu. And meatballs. And meatballs. Look at it. Mm. You going crazy? Yeah. That shit's smacking, ain't it? Look at you. That meatball? Yeah. That meatball different. Look at it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, look at that. Ooh. Right there. Oh yeah, that's a good that's a good shot. It's a good meatball. Yeah. <laughs> and Gold knows a good meatball. Stop it. Uh, and then we had we had dessert. I had tiramisu and Dario had gelato. Hey, y'all know this is the first gelato I had since Italy, y'all. I know. Man, look, it was good. It was, it was really good. good. It was good. Different than yeah. Italians doing it, something different. But this was good for gelato here. I would say I got yeah. these uh mm. What I, is it? What's it? <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's the chocolate vanilla pistachio. Uh, I forgot what they call it. Hey, this is my damn bad head rub. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that taste? Mm. It's going crazy. Mm -mm. It's going I'm not crazy. Even talking. That's not really you crazy. said you you got to concentrate. Look at you. Hey, look at that bokeh in the background going crazy. Where? This is about to be a program. <laughs> I mean a program. Up. Uh, uh, <laughs> let me just stop. <laughs> but look at. But look at the first gelato since it's Rome. Since Rome, baby. How is how is this? Shit, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Here's the you, thing. You're smacking. You, you know what time it is when I get gelato. Mm. No time wasted. I'm surprised you still have space after all that sausage that you ate. Don't do me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was, it it was, was good. really good. You get three different flavors. You get, um... I just said put, chocolate vanilla pistachio. <laughs> I just said that. You see, you don't be your boy to don't follow it. no storyline. Cut, cut the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. All in all. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. This is a good We're not giving ratings, but yeah, 10 right, out of 10. Yeah, she did, though. Look, 10 out of 10. I, this, I, that's your first I, rating in a long time. I think, like, the experience, the vibe, it's a the middle of the neighborhood. <laughs> the Trevi Fountain behind us. <laughs> right, we the right family in. feel. Like, it's a very neighborhoody family And feel. Joey know everybody. Everybody. He, he was greeting everybody by name. He know everybody by name. He's like, oh, yeah, people come here two, three times a week. I he was said, like, I've been, three times he a third week. generation, he third generation Italian here from the family. 93 so years, y'all. They, they've been here. He ain't 93, but like, but the family. He's definitely not, not 93. <laughs> no, he, he the young as proud. Been here. My man's yeah. busting tables and everything. Yeah. What's going on? But this is dope. If y'all out here, close by Greek Town, we're in Little Italy. We're in Little uh, Italy you're by close, UIC. Hey, you're close to uh, the whole house, so. Very. Definitely, you you could park in the parking lot. Yeah, uh, and they have free valet parking. Free so. valet here. You yeah. just got a tip. That's it, and, and you got a tip. These and the and, and did you notice that the valet they run it, they park your oh, car, yeah. and then they, they, they hide music they back like, to the. They seem like college or high school kids right, so that are hustling. home for the summer. Yeah, that they are hustling. just like they, they you know they need this bread. Yeah, yeah, they need this bread. But all right, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the whole mess. yeah, we we go, we good. Um, how my beard look down here? No, oh, but, she no, scraggly? Stop it. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>